上海的外贸再亮亮了。上海的空气质量都对到太差了，你看看上海宝瑞区啊，卢沧岗，那空气质空气质量堆积如山，吐死人了，江浙沪的厂子都跑哪去了？哎呦我的天嘞，俺这个运输行业再没法干了，都没有货，仓库也没有货，进仓啊，现在都不需要排队，同志们，咱是干家园的。进呢都不需要排队，到哪都行，不像以前给小贝、给烟、给水，现在没有那回事了。A man working at a Shenzhen factory says that businesses of all sizes in Shenzhen are struggling. Factories lack orders, and workers have nothing to do. I've been working for over a decade, and this year feels like the toughest in the electronics manufacturing sector. We were busy for barely two weeks, and last week I only worked an eight-hour overtime shift once. This never happened in previous years. I have nothing to do tonight, and I'm uncertain about tomorrow. Entering 2023, China's real estate market continues to be stagnant. In many cities, the selling price of second-hand houses has plummeted to record lows. The highly sought-after apartment blocks Palais du Lac Royal, once considered the hottest buy in 2018, recently sold a second-hand unit at a unit price of just 23,000 yuan. This was not only its lowest price ever, but was also below its original launch price. Investors who once fiercely competed for these properties have now come up empty-handed. Remember, this property once fetched a high of 36,000 yuan for second-hand units in 2021. The taxi and rideshare industry is also suffering. Drivers no longer dare to roam the streets aimlessly because there are no passengers and no bookings. It's just wasting fuel. Honestly, this industry is no longer sustainable. These past two months, I can barely make ends meet. The situation for physical stores is even grimmer. A company owner estimates that in the next three years, 50% of factories and brick-and-mortar stores in China will go bankrupt. Because of the rise of e-commerce in many sectors, only about 5% of businesses are actually profitable. The rest, like our small company or some mom-and-pop shops, manage to make a profit because of our low overheads. However, any slightly bigger enterprise that can't keep up with customer traffic is bound to close eventually. On August 16th, Chinese Premier Li Qiang stated in a state council meeting that, under the core leadership of President Xi, Chinese economy is quote improving overall. On the same day, Xinhua News Agency described China as still being fertile ground for global investors. But the various economic data released by the Chinese government up to July 2023 sharply contradicts their claims. All major economic indicators for China point to an unprecedented downturn across investments, foreign trade, real estate, finance, and consumer sectors. Some analysts say that this is the first time China has experienced such a comprehensive set of negative economic indicators. This marks a significant historical milestone. Let's delve into and analyze them one by one. First, investment. China's National Bureau of Statistics announced that the total fixed asset investment from January to July this year was 28.6 trillion yuan, compared to 31.98 trillion yuan during the same period last year. Despite this, the bureau falsely claimed an increase of 3.4%. Doing the math, fixed investments fell by approximately 11% year on year, second only to the 13% decline in 2019. And with the clear trend of decline month by month, it might surpass the 2019 decrease by the end of the year. Within the realm of fixed asset investment, the most glaring issue is the collapse of private investment. During the period, it stood at 14.9 trillion yuan compared to 17.8 trillion yuan during the same period last year. That marks a decline of 16 percent. Even more consequential than the decline in private investment is the near cessation of foreign direct investment (FDI) into China. 
According to a report by Nikkei News, statistics from China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange show that foreign companies direct investment into infrastructure and factory construction in China for April to June was merely 4.9 billion U.S. dollars, a drastic 76% decrease from the 20.5 billion U.S. dollars recorded from January to March. This represents an 87% decline year on year, hitting its lowest since comparable data became available in 1998. In this economic climate, both year on year and month on month comparisons became almost meaningless, with investment on the verge of grinding to a complete halt. Foreign investment in China's industries has been the major driver of its economic growth since the 2000s. At its peak in 2022, FDI reached a staggering 100 billion U.S. dollars in a single quarter. But this figure began to plummet rapidly from the second quarter of 2022. A significant reason for this exodus was the Chinese Communist Party's stringent zero-COVID policy. The ceiling off of Shanghai, where the headquarters of many multinational corporations are located, became unbearable for many foreign enterprises. This led to a mass exit from China. In light of this dire situation, the State Council rolled out 24 policies on August 13th in an attempt to optimize the foreign investment environment and strengthen foreign investment. Intriguingly, the Chinese Communist Party seems to be sending mixed messages. On July 1st of this year, the revised counter-espionage law took effect, expanding the definition of espionage activities. Then, on August 1st, the Ministry of State Security issued a call on WeChat for a society-wide mobilization against espionage, urging the public to report suspected spies with rewards promised for successful tip-offs. Voice of America analyzed that perceived business risks for foreign companies have been significantly amplified by the looming shadow of the counter-espionage law, Beijing's tendency for retaliation against foreign enterprises, China's flagging economy, and its geopolitical tension with the West. This will only hasten foreign companies' departure from China. As investments sharply decline, China's economy is bound to enter a prolonged downturn with soaring unemployment rates. The living standards of the common people are deteriorating, with many struggling to even make ends meet. The unemployment rate among China's youth, aged 16 to 24, has surpassed 20 percent for three consecutive months. Yet, amidst the graduation season in July, the National Bureau of Statistics announced a suspension of related data, which undoubtedly exacerbates concerns about China's economic health. The root cause for both domestic and foreign entities abandoning investments is crystal clear: a loss of faith in China's future prospects. Without building new factories or updating production lines, operations will naturally halt as existing lines become obsolete. This leads to a looming nationwide laydown mentality. Second, exports. Exports serve as a mechanism for earning foreign currency to subsidize domestic needs. It's a genuinely profitable business. Unfortunately, data from the Chinese Customs Authority shows that from January to July, exports totaled 1.94 trillion U.S. dollars, a 6% drop from the 2.06 trillion U.S. dollars during the same period last year. For July alone, exports were at 281 billion USD. A 15% decrease from the 330 billion USD of July the previous year. Things deteriorated quickly in the month of July with a trade surplus of 64 billion US dollars, which is a significant 27% decrease from the 88 billion US dollars of the same month in the previous year. With sluggish goods exports and the surge in outbound tourism due to the reopening of borders, there has been a substantial outflow of foreign exchange. The culmination of these factors has drastically reduced the overall trade surplus. Third, real estate. The real estate sector in China already took a nosedive in 2022, with an annual sales area decline of 24 percent. There was a brief recovery in the market during the first quarter of this year, reducing the drop in sales area to 3.5 percent. But the market collapsed again, with a decline of 14 percent for the first half of the year. In July, the sales area was 71 million square meters compared to 93 million square meters in July of the previous year. This is a 24% decline, almost matching the decline of 
The real estate market has seen its size cut in half consecutively over two years. The only suspense now is to watch it halve again and see what remains in the aftermath. 4. Finance China Affairs commentator Li Jun, during his appearance on the Elite Forum program, remarked that July's economic data was utterly shocking, akin to a dark omen. According to social financing data from the People's Bank of China, the increase in renminbi loans in July was just 346 billion, an 89% decline from 3 trillion in June. New housing loans went from over 960 billion in June to just 200 billion in July, a nosedive drop of 79%. He emphasized that this wasn't merely an economic downturn, it felt like a complete collapse. China's largest real estate developer, Country Garden, and the medium-sized Sina Ocean Group are both facing cash shortages, echoing the dire situation of the debt-laden Evergrande Group. These financial crises are bound to add insult to injury for the Chinese economy. The Chinese Communist Party can no longer rely on the ever-increasing property prices to drive economic growth. Qin Weiping, a Chinese economist based in the U.S., believes the Chinese government will find it challenging to bail out collapsing companies. He said, quote, If the fundamentals of the economy were sound and only a single company or a few had operational issues, the central government would have the capacity to intervene, even if the funds involved reached trillions. It's not just one Evergrande or one country garden. Almost all enterprises are set to face issues, and the government, even if willing, lacks the capacity to save them. Hong Kong writer Gan Shun Kao believes that the CCP is unable to resolve the current financial crisis. Their only option is to delay the social crisis. However, the longer it's postponed, the more massive and challenging the impending explosion becomes. The Chinese government has run out of solutions and is in a critical state. 5. Consumer Spending the data cited here refers to sales from major retailers, specifically those with an annual turnover of over 5 million RMB. This set of figures is considered to be relatively more reliable. From January to July this year, sales from these major retailers totaled 9.9 .9 trillion RMB, a mere 4% increase from last year's 9.5 trillion RMB. The growth rate has been clearly declining this year. Looking only at July, sales reached 1.364 trillion RMB, just a 0.9% increase from last July's 1.352 trillion RMB. This indicates that consumer spending is on the brink of actual contraction. Considering the earlier mentioned contractions in investment, exports, real estate, and finance, a shrinking consumption trend is inevitable. From a grassroots perspective, Chinese households no longer have the purchasing power they once did. Rather than witnessing a consumer frenzy after the lifting of pandemic restrictions, there's a prevailing trend of caution in spending. According to online users, this year saw a drop in users of the ride-sharing platform Didi from 45 million to 10 million. The travel platform Ctrip also experienced a three-quarters drop in users from 26 million to 6 million. Liu Chiao, dean of Guanghua School of Management at Peking University, revealed this month that 280 million people in China have an annual income of less than 8,400 RMB, around 1,200 US dollars. Following the release of these discouraging economic figures, the RMB's exchange rate against the US dollar fell below 7.3 in August, depreciating to its lowest level since last November. Facing these economic challenges, the CCP is attempting to intervene in private enterprises. Since late July, a so-called anti-corruption storm has been raging in the pharmaceutical sector. By August 14th, around 180 hospital leaders were investigated, more than double last year's total, with numerous scandals of so-called corruption emerging. If this tactic of scrutinizing each previously profitable industry continues, it will drain the resources of the middle and upper class. Pushing everyone to a dead end will eventually lead to the downfall of the CCP's reign. While indirectly pocketing civilian property, there's also an effort to control capital outflow. In early August, He Mei, chairman of Shanghai's leading overseas immigration company, Wailian, was criminally detailed for illegal foreign exchange trading. 
According to Chinese law, each person can only exchange up to fifty thousand dollars per year, an amount insufficient for emigrants. Many elites have fled China in recent years, and this crackdown will impact a vast number of people, virtually criminalizing every investor emigrant. In response to mounting pressures, the CCP's efforts to stabilize its position may not yield the desired outcomes, potentially accelerating a political crisis. The July data across investments, exports, real estate, finance, and consumption indicates a comprehensive economic downturn. Particularly with foreign companies retreating from China, it marks the end of China's era of economic prosperity. This analysis is based on data released by the CCP itself. The actual situation is likely even grimmer. Recently, Xi Jinping has mentioned in multiple speeches that China is facing quote unimaginable storms and waves. U.S. President Joe Biden also publicly stated that the Chinese economy is a quote ticking time bomb unquote. The continued economic downturn and resultant social tensions will increase internal chaos within the CCP. In 2022, due to discontent with the real estate crisis, there was a nationwide wave of collective refusal to pay mortgages by the borrowers. In November of the same year, the CCP's extreme zero COVID policy led to massive nationwide protests, with Shanghai protesters directly chanting calls for Xi Jinping and the CCP to step down. Currently, both the East and West see the CCP nearing its end. The question on everyone's mind is: How much longer can it hold on to its power?